Copilot has a little secret. Depending on your viewpoint, you might see this secret as a special cheat code to get more performance from Copilot in certain circumstances. Or you might see it as just bold-faced money-grabbing duplicity from Microsoft. Or yet still, it might just be a bug in tools that have been rushed to market without full consideration of the interplay between them. But I think this particular issue, feature, bug, cheat code, whatever you want to call it, is an important indicator it's worthwhile to shine a spotlight on in relation to Copilot, that wider Copilot ecosystem, and the licensing implications that might become clear in the months and years to come. So in this video, I'm going to dig into the feature I'm talking about and show you some side-by-side -side examples to demonstrate it. But first, I'm going to zoom out to consider the topic more broadly. As always, any demos you'll see are produced in a way that ensures you never see anyone's private data. But before we dive in, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCourcy. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. It's now been a year since the release of Bing Chat, which was Microsoft's first big splash into the generative AI market that ChatGPT had created a few months earlier. And this product, now called Copilot, has come a long way since the heady days of Sydney falling in love with the New York Times columnist and threatening people. There's a link to my video from that time below if you need a refresher on those issues. A handful of AI products suddenly morphed into what was reported by the fall of 2023 as more than 100 co-pilots floating around Microsoft internally, with a growing collection, both broad and eclectic, of co-pilot label products out in the wild. We have the free for everyone, the free for specific use cases, the pro versions for consumers, the non-pro versions for pros, and really expensive add-ons for workers bringing all the dollars into your company. And the features currently available in those we have access to are really just a handful of those that have been announced. We know that the add-on trajectory is unlikely to dissipate anytime soon. The new planner announcements, with us looking out for a new version of planner coming this year, suggest that for the coolest new features, including those infused with AI, there will be an additional upcharge. And just yesterday I was reading about AI features that have been removed from the free Microsoft designer, with speculation this could mean a paid pro tier of this product coming soon too. This new reality is a lot for people to get on top of. In a survey I conducted of viewers here last summer, before the pricing of Copilot for Microsoft 365 was announced, most people thought it would just be something that would be added on for free. Particularly for those on lower tier base licenses, that $30 a month or $360 a year price tag for the upgrade was mind-blowing. Now, I don't personally think it should be. I previously made a video focusing in on this issue of how you should think about the price, which I'll link below. But the TLDR, or maybe TLDW of that, is that for the target audience of that add-on, saving $30 a month in time with Copilot should be pretty easy. However, this doesn't dissipate that concern that with only a handful of Copilots actually live and a massive backlog of features still to appear, we're all really unclear on what the AI-powered organisation in Microsoft's collective minds will look like from a licensing spend perspective. A doubling of your Microsoft 365 spend to get AI may be reasonable, but a tripling? A quadrupling? I would go on, but I'd have to look up what comes next. If we assume that many of the upcoming features Microsoft has in its pipeline are going to end up as new add-ons in the style of the current Teams Premium or the expected Planner Premium, there's an important follow-up consideration. Will these tools be designed to play alongside one another so you can use different combinations of add-ons to focus in on the needs of very specific user profiles? Or will they be designed to stack so you only get the best feature set and performance from an individual add-on if you have also bought some of the others. I guess you could boil this down to us wondering if Microsoft is likely to split out these features to enhance user choice or just to justify charging us more. So next, let's jump into the specifics. But before we do, if you're enjoying this video and it's bringing you value, please do hit the like button to help it get in front of a wider audience. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, 
please do to see more like this. I've shown you this graphic before. It's the one that Microsoft shared when it announced Copilot Pro and released Copilot for Microsoft 365 to smaller organizations. It implies that there are three tiers of the Copilot product, and depending on your needs and your use profile, you can select the tier that makes sense for you without missing anything that is available in the lower tiers. This represents stacking on the provider side rather than the customer side. The customer only need buy Copilot for Microsoft 365 if they require all those features that are listed instead of buying all the licensing in the group to get everything. However, in my previous video on Copilot Pro, a link to that is below, I dug in a little to the promise that Copilot Pro, a product designed for consumers, can benefit from commercial data protection. Finding this only applied if you link the associated consumer account to an enter ID or work or school account that would otherwise have that protection. This led to the strange situation where you can have a user clearly licensed for Copilot for Microsoft 365 because they have the work or web switch on their Copilot homepage also showing access to Copilot Pro in the Copilot logo. What wasn't answered in that video was is there any substantive difference that a Copilot for Microsoft 365 licensed user is going to get from seeing that Copilot Pro logo or is it simply a visual difference? As remember, if we go back to the feature diagram Microsoft shared, Copilot for Microsoft 365 gets everything that Copilot Pro does, plus some extra features. Here, we have two views of Copilot. The user on the right is licensed for Copilot for Microsoft 365 only, whereas the user on the left is licensed for Copilot for Microsoft 365 and Copilot Pro. You should already be able to see a difference, and that is that on the creative mode, the Copilot Pro account has access to a GPT-4 Turbo switch that the other does not, and the creative and precise modes are both showing GPT-4 for the Pro account, whereas the other isn't. I don't think this necessarily means they aren't using GPT-4, as my understanding is that GPT-4 access and even GPT-4 Turbo is included in even the free Copilot, but only at non-peak times. However, for balance, let's choose balanced, as that should give us the same performance in both, right? I'm going to use a few of the sample prompts Copilot will show you at the top of the page for consistency. First, what are five to six ways to beat procrastination? You can see that the account with added Copilot Pro is very fast compared to the other. It definitely appears that there is a greater level of model use priority given to that account. But in the end, the output of the two are broadly similar. However, if you're a heavy user of Copilot, waiting an extra few seconds for each request is going to add up. So buying that $20 a month accelerated access might be the cheat code you're looking for. But wait a moment, there's more demos to come. Let's try write a short essay that analyzes the merits of universal basic income. Again, the pro enabled account is lightning fast, but it seems clear with this response that there is significantly more going on here than just getting better access to the same model. It seems that Copilot is behaving differently. In the end, they both give a reasonable response to the question, but the structure of the non-pro response is, in my opinion, better, more clearly laid out, and if you were to take this as the start of your work, you'd probably find it easier to edit and integrate with. It's interesting to see they both cite exactly the same sources, but end up with such different approaches. Let's try one more. Organize the world's tallest trees into a table by habitat. Again, the pro enabled account is really fast, but on this one, I think you could say it seems really lazy. The non-pro response is entirely more comprehensive, both in terms of the structure and amount of information it provides. You virtually have time to go off and make a coffee while you're waiting for it to finish. It's so slow compared to the pro enabled account. But ultimately, if this is the information you were really looking for, I think it probably does a better job of giving you what you need. To me, again, it seems that there's far more going on here than just different levels of priority accessing the same model with the same requests. Because the LLM is dealing with each request individually, you do see variations in responses, even to the same prompt, but this is a very significant variation and aligns with what we've already seen. Let's think about image generation. Create an image of a cat and a dog sleeping on a couch together in a warmly lit living room. Again, 
the Pro Enabled account is faster and you get the Copilot Pro benefit of the landscape orientation images rather than square ones. But there isn't any significant reason I can see to think that one does a substantively better job than the other. All eight images shown provide a fair representation of what was prompted. So why am I focusing in on this? Well, in my view, this comes down to the question of are Copilot's designed to stack or are they designed to sit alongside one another? Has Microsoft created a product offering when even if your boss has bought you a $30 a month add-on for your work, it's designed to only operate optimally if you also spend an extra $20 a month at home? That pro add-on definitely makes Copilot faster, but it also seems to make it worse. So my next question is how deep does this difference go? Switching over to Copilot, what used to be called Microsoft 365 Chat, but now every product at Microsoft has to be called Copilot, so no one ever has any clue which you're actually talking about. I've given both accounts access to the script I used for my recent Loop, an app too far video, and I'm going to ask both Copilots to summarize that file. This type of request relies exclusively on internal graph content, but it still makes an LLM request, though based on Microsoft's accounting of the architecture of Copilot for Microsoft 365 versus Copilot, the process of making that LLM request is quite different. And there's no significant appreciable difference between the two responses, but we can follow up with something more specific to create a table-based summary. This is trying to dig into the question of is this tool working as hard for both accounts? And you could argue that the non-pro version of the response is more comprehensive, but I would say the difference you're seeing here is more in keeping with the differences that you often see between responses using exactly the same prompt when using the same service than the ones that we were seeing just using Copilot before, which were wildly different in my opinion. Last, let's add in some web browsing functionality. And if you're new to Copilot for Microsoft 365, this is a great way to use this Microsoft 365 chat. You can use the contents of your internal generated response with web search to expand your knowledge or the value of Copilot's response on a specific topic. And on this, the responses are indeed different, but there is no significant difference in quality that I think it's important to highlight. We're never going to get exactly the same result in the same way that if you ask two team members to do exactly the same task, they may approach it slightly differently. For most requests, we have to rely on a subjective rather than objective comparison. So my conclusion on this is while having that Copilot Pro license attached to your account does indeed change the experience of Copilot for Copilot for Microsoft 365 licensed users, it has no impact on those features that like Microsoft 365 Chat are part of Copilot for Microsoft 365, but not Copilot Pro. If you enjoy the content here on my YouTube channel, then I invite you to use the link down below to join my mailing list. Here, you can learn more about new upcoming products, like my new course on AI adoption for small and medium enterprises that will be going live on my website in the coming weeks. Special offers on my products and services, like discounts on my one-on-one -on -one coaching services, and current topics in the Microsoft 365 productivity and AI space. The problem with all of this is that based on the basic information Microsoft has shared about its Copilot product line, I don't think there should be any performance difference at all. I'm not even really sure if what we're seeing is a feature or a bug. I cannot find any reference materials on this, and I don't seem to be able to get an answer that elaborates on this issue. This is my own rabbit hole that I've gone deep into due to my initial head scratching about commercial data protection being listed as a feature of Copilot Pro. However, whatever the reason, I'm pretty sure many CEOs who have just authorized massive new IT spends to buy an objectively expensive add-on to AI power their organization with Microsoft's best technology would be somewhat displeased at the thought that how performant that technology is depends on what Microsoft services their employees choose to buy at home. 
I mean, we've never been in a situation where word spell check in the office works faster because you chose to buy more Hotmail storage for your personal account. On a similar topic, Lisa Crosby published a great video recently looking at another Microsoft Copilot product, Copilot for Sales. There's a link to this video below and you should go watch it, particularly if you use Dynamics 365 or Salesforce. I won't dig into the detail of this here, but this is another place where we are starting to see a similar complexity around whether licenses stack features or whether they are separate and purpose-specific. Copilot for Sales costs $50 a month. It includes Copilot for Microsoft 365 and then extra upgrades that stack on top of Dynamics 365 Sales Pro or Sales Enterprise. But if you have Dynamics 365 Sales Premium, you already have half of what's included in Copilot for Sales. But if you want everything, you need to buy Copilot for Microsoft 365. Makes sense? I'm not going to go over it again, and there will be a quiz at the end of the video. Different combinations and permutations of licenses is nothing new for Microsoft. But as I think I've shown here with the Copilot Pro cheat code that ended up not really being a benefit at all, is that in this AI age, the impact of these combinations can potentially show up in unexpected and unwanted ways. In the past, a feature has either worked or not. The button has appeared or it hasn't. But now, how would a person with Copilot Pro even know the responses they were getting at work were worse than their colleagues? In our new AI-powered organisations, the worst case scenario is they'd only find out at their next performance review. On one level, there is a clarity piece here, where if Microsoft claims a product has priority model access, a similar product, also noted to have priority model access, should have similar performance when accessing that model. But it goes beyond this. Side-by-side -side feature comparisons that are disconnected from actual performance and efficacy by what's going on in a black box in the background are simply not so relevant anymore. A situation where users are seemingly using the same product, but with very different levels of efficacy based solely on what combination of licenses are attached to their account, including ones that their business cannot even see, is not a road that we want to go down particularly if Copilot is going to be the new scaffolding that helps us get work done in more general terms. In the same way, the mouse and keyboard have been access routes to the power of the PC up until now. In chapter 13 of my book, Who's in the Copilot Seat, I reflect on this issue, writing, Imagine if back in the 1970s, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates had looked at the mouse and conceived it as an application-specific tool one where you needed a mouse with a certain button configuration to use a word processor and another for a spreadsheet. And further imagine that instead of a mouse being a static piece of equipment, it was something that got updated regularly, and Apple or Microsoft charged you a monthly fee for this service, month after month, for as long as you needed the tools it worked with. If these co-pilots will evolve to be the new mouse and keyboard, then under the software as a service licensing model that is ubiquitous today, Microsoft has started us on a very different journey with this interface technology than the one that saw a mouse and keyboard thrown into every PC shipping box from the 1980s through to today. Will we reach a point where the AI powered interface is so easily integrated and ubiquitous that it will just be thrown in it with any new software? Or will Microsoft be hesitant to give up some of its recurring income gained through the development of Copilot, and so act as a gatekeeper of what can and cannot be done with a computer in a vastly different way than we see today? Any students of the history of capitalism should know and be concerned by the answer. Only a few months has passed since I wrote that, but I wonder if we start to see the first glimpses of that with what we've looked at in this video. Services that morph in how they work based on what other control services you've chosen to invest in. I may not have shown you that cheat code for Copilot that you may have imagined, but I may have shared a glimpse of the cheat code that AI software vendors will use to disrupt 40 years of established wisdom about what buying a piece of software should mean for the end user. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.